Boko the Class 28 was feeling on top of the world. A few days ago, he had received word that the restoration of his only surviving classmate, D5705, was progressing well at the East Lancashire Railway. As he took a passenger train from Brendon to Wellsworth, the calm weather couldn't help but brighten the diesels of spirits. At least, until he got to Lower Suttery. A little while later, Edward was idling at Wellsworth as the diesel arrived, and watched as the coaches were shunted away after the passengers disembarked. Hello, Boko. Nice day for a passenger run, isn't it? Damn that fucking route master. I hope he gets left as a henhouse again, while the driver is stripped of his license and sent to prison. What are you talking about? Nothing of your concern, you nosy asshole. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to go and collect some wagons from Ellsbridge and take them back to Brendam. Do me a favour and leave me in peace. And Boko said no more. He just waited for James to pass by with a passenger train bound for Knapford, then set off for Thomas's junction. Edward was left completely speechless. Later that night, Edward was resting in the yards just north of Brendam when Boko came back. It had been another busy day. Good evening, Boko. How was that run to Ellsbridge? Fun, I suppose. I don't suppose you've felt any better since this morning. Wouldn't you like to know, fuckwit? How dare you speak to me like that! Hey! Where do you think you're going? Don't you know it's dark outside? Fuck you, Edward. The last thing I want is to be bothered by a mingy old windbag. Right! I'm not taking this one lying down! After him, driver! Edward stormed off and attempted to chase Boko. It took a fair while, but he managed to catch up to the diesel at the far end of the harbour, famous for its appearance in All at Sea. Oh great, this is a fine time for my engine to give out again. Damn you, Crossley! What the hell do you think you're playing at, man? I thought I told you to leave me in peace. That's meaningless now, especially after that heinous insult. I'm not going to make a stereotypical YouTuber apology video if that's what you're thinking. Never mind any possible apology. If you can just tell me what's wrong, then I'll go back to the shed, alright? Fan. I had a near-death experience at Lower Suttery this morning. Borgy came screaming through the crossing just before the platforms and barely missed me. That see you next Tuesday scared me after death and all, and that's to say nothing of what the passengers might have thought about the sudden emergency braking. Bloody hell! You would think that his driver would at least know a tiny bit about railway safety, considering all the red tape you have to go through in order to learn and be a bloody bus driver. Yes indeed. I hope there weren't any rail fans around to see this. You are indeed correct. I don't want any of them to record any kind of accident on camera. As for Borgy and his mongrel of a driver, I hope they both get involved in a nasty crash themselves. It would serve those bastards right. Mate, the incident's over and done with, and there's no need to wish that much harm on anyone. So just make like the Beatles and let it be. Give over. You'd be feeling the same way as me if you were in my situation. With all due respect, I've had enough life experience to know that you just can't help some people, no matter how badly they screw up on a railway crossing. In cases like that, it's best to just let it run. Anyway, I'll leave you to think things through. I'm going back to the shed for now, 
and I just hope your mental state, or at the very least, your dodgy prime mover, gets better. The next morning, Edward offered to take Boko's freight train to the Little Western. The veteran K2 met a familiar 060 tank engine when he reached Ellsbridge Yard. Good morning, Thomas. The same to you, Edward. But I thought Boko was meant to be taking this train. He's recovering from a traumatic incident, so I'm covering for him until he gets better. Well, that's very nice of you, but dare I ask what happened? Let's just say that it was like the events of Mavis and the lorry, only without the road vehicle tipping over, but it was still quite shocking for Boko. Oh, I see. Well, I hope he's alright. In any case, I believe you brought some wagons for me. Indeed I have. The last four in my train are destined for Maithwaite. They're loaded with flowers to decorate the station like it was that one season five episode again. <coughs> Jolly good. I'll shunt them in front of Annie and Clarabelle after you've left. But what about the brake van? You can't just pinch it like a petty criminal. I had no intention of stealing the fucking thing. I already knew that I'd have to shunt it back over to your train. I guess I'd better get on with it so as not to hold you up any longer. And with that, Thomas got ready to assemble his mixed train. This was closely followed by Edward leaving to continue his run to Arlesborough via Tidmouth. Meanwhile, Boko's mental state had recovered to the point where he could go up to Wellsworth and take a tanker train down to Brendam. As he trundled along, he tried to focus on the good things that he still had in his life, but it was a lot easier said than done. As for Bulgy, he got impounded by the police, while his driver received a short prison sentence after being charged for reckless driving. Bertie thought this was a great joke and it left Sodor's only Metrovic feeling very relieved, at the very least. <laughs> 